Welcome to Gulfstream Park and Gulfstream today on an absolutely spectacular Sunday Again. afternoon. Again, two <laughs> days in a row now. We're going to start the day with a fast main track and a firm turf course. Ron Nicoletti along with Abby Fuller. And uh, we're going to start the day with a nice uh, carryover, too, yes. in the, the super high five. We're going to show you our betting strategies throughout the afternoon. And like I said, fast main track, firm turf course, absolutely beautiful. First race, the super high five, has a carryover of two thousand two hundred and forty nine dollars so jump right in we have that ace eight horse field so uh you'll be able to play that also in the first race of course kicks off our early pick five and that is a 50 cent wager and of course uh the first five races on the card and of course the big news in south florida over the last week or two is the carryover in the rainbow six it's approaching four hundred thousand dollars they bet yesterday was well over four hundred thousand dollars of course we give 70 percent back if it's not a one single ticket yeah. but the six out of six still pays nicely even if you don't get that one unique ticket and of course with a nine race card race number five will be our final pick five of the afternoon so uh hope to give you some uh, useful insights here and uh, don't forget to get your rainbow six ticket together because that can make the uh, next week, a pretty nice week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice pot at the end of that rainbow, <laughs> Exactly. Huh? So let's take a look at the Sunday's first race, and we're going to start it off with a turf event, one mile and one sixteenth. These are fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. And they're non-winners of two races in life, and we both settled on the number eight responsive. This one dropped into this 12-5 level. In the first start, since a couple of really solid performances against 16 two-lifetime claimers during January and February, boy, this barn, they to win again yesterday. They've been winning all over the country. We're talking about trainer Mark Cassie. Got Tyler Gaffley, you know, Gaffley on named on uh, this daughter of Strong Hope. Looks like the logical choice to start today. Currently on the board at 9 to 5, but not the actual favorite. It's another horse in there, but this horse certainly uh, with the connections alone, you got to think about using it. Yeah, I, I mean, I started my you know, analysis with, the, she's from the Mark Cassie <laughs> barn, and uh, she came close last time out at this level. She was beaten, uh, and this I thought, I mean, this is silly, but my people that come and <laughs> want to pick names, she was beaten on Valentine's Day by Angel of Love. So, you know, I'm giving her a little <laughs> excuse there. She was third, beaten a couple of lengths, and she's been fresh, freshened up a little bit and has that tactical speed. Yeah, you can't beat those hunch plays on certain days. <laughs> if something named Santa Claus is running on uh, I guess Christmas, you have yep. to worry about it. <laughs> Number three, the current favorite up there right now, very, very early in the wagering, is the three classy Klepper. This one's going to wear blinkers today. First start since showing uh, no early speed prior to finishing fifth behind Responsive on February 14th. Mike Yakes worked it three times at three furlongs. I think they're drilling some speed into her. Yeah. Going to hone her early interest. They're taking some early money in here, and I think that the game is to get her uh, interested much early than she was last time out. Right. That certainly looks like the plan. I, I saw the blinkers on and and you know, she was dropping pretty far back and exactly I think you're exactly right about what they're what they're trying to do and you know, I think that's why people are making her the favorite right now. Yeah, but that's early on. We'll see how the things of I think the eight will probably end up being favorite. But you also use the number seven in here and that's Fearless Princess. Yeah, you know, I'm saying this horse has more ability than we saw in last. She's been freshened up a little bit. And on one of her better races, she's so shown some useful tactical speed. And I just thought that she was due for a little wake up. We'll see how the first race plays out, if it's going to be the 8 or 3 or someone else. And once again, don't forget, we got that super high five carry over almost $3,000 in that pool. We'll go to race two and we'll go to the main track. It's a one mile maiden claiming event. Phillies and Mayors 3 and up, $12,500. I did go with the number three in here, and that's Lororiyama. And this one is cutting back to a one turn mile uh, after tracking the pace and finishing second, going a mile in the 16th. At this $12,500 level last time, out of that performance uh, it's a pretty wide open affair i put this one on top of with no no great feeling that this is the one to beat in here and i know you went a different way and uh, with the first fiddle in here and first fiddle certainly has a shot yeah you know i like that they added blinkers they're adding lasix um i'm thinking that they got stalls over at gulf stream west looks like they were shipping uh from uh probably Ocala, right. you know, they were working up a classic mile and stuff. So I'm thinking all that stuff is in our favor and, and I'm looking for, you know, a little, a little shake up. 
Yeah, and a gelding coming back, uh, reported as a, a gelding for this race this afternoon. Uh, the other horse we both used on our ticket, uh, we mentioned, is, we'll mention, is the number one, and that's Sylvester Lioli. This one is dropping to this level on the dirt, showed some tactical speed and faded late, but that was a pair. $16,000 maiden text going a mile on the turf. Steve Dwoskin, a couple of wins over the last two days. Yep. And talking about the hot apprentice, John Cruz will be yep. in the saddle. And if you're not aware, it didn't reach the program yet, but but he is now a five-pound apprentice. He got his 40th right. win. Actually, got 40 wins plus yesterday. Yes. So he was on a good roll. He's been riding in great form. A kid, you yeah. got to watch out. He'll have that uh, five-pound apprentice now for the run of one year, right? Yes. Is that how it works? One yeah. year. So that we both used that horse. And the other one we used was the Two Magnetic Girl. Uh, right, and and this horse is going to add the blinkers and was hung wide in both those local starts. So I, I think she can do better. She's in capable hands. Yeah, and I think that blinkers are a must. It looks like yep. she was devoid of any early speed when facing similar at seven furlongs. So another horse that they're trying to wake up. Yes. As you mentioned, Terry Pompey is the trainer. Jesus Rios will be in the saddle this afternoon. Uh, let's go to race number three. And we're back on the turf for this one. Seven and a half furlongs in allowance. Optional claimer. Phillies, three-year-olds, $75,000. A couple of scratches to report in here. Scratch the number two, born to be a winner. Also scratch the both main track only participants, number six seven and number eight and uh, golden delicious on top of my ticket and um, we'll start with golden delicious in here because i want to show you something with the horse you have on top in just a minute so golden delicious will try and make it three victories in a row after responding to a surface switch last out with a commanding score on the grass that was in the mrs presidentress uh, todd pletcher has ed godzias atop this hundred and fifty thousand dollar daughter of harlan's holiday I don't know if they knew what they had with this horse, where they kept putting it in lower places. Right. And I think now that they realize that this horse has got two in a row, that they've got a pretty good horse on their hands. Yeah, I mean, she definitely, I, I had her in second, and, um, you know, I thought we'd see what Zayas does. Um, somewhat unusually, there's a lot of speed in this right. race, in that, in that seven and a half distance. So right. um, I thought he could elect to you know, she's an improving filly and that he could maybe see if he wants to raid her a little bit if somebody's out there gunning on the front end. Well, one of those horses we're talking about that has speed is the horse we want to show, talk about now, the one you have on top, yeah. Rontos Lily. We're going to go back and show you uh, uh, her, our last race in the stretch and everything like that. She was running some ni nice horses in here, and you'll see Rontos Lily as she's coming down. Looks like she's going to get swallowed up. She's running. She's game going, 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 and then she just sort of uh, ducks in a little bit here, causing the horse on the inside to uh, have to steady in there, and uh, from that, they took her down in that race, so, uh, right. you know, and placed her down, but boy, she ran really good. She was, uh, you know, she bought a bunch of horses in there. She's turning back to seven and a half furlongs. She tracked those fractions. She drifted out during that stretch run. That was in the $75,000 Sanibel right. Island. Right, right, and and that was, you know, the um, she's got good speed, and I think she'll get good early position from that inside post. Um, she's not going to get anything at all like in her, in her previous um, prices, because they were pretty good. Um, but off that uh, good, albeit DQ'd effort, right. I thought she looked really, I thought she looked solid. No, she was very game in there, and that was a much tougher competition yes. in here, like you mentioned. So the other horse is a six horse in it. It's Instant Irma, back in South Florida for Trina Belmont after shipping up to Tampa. Uh, had the lead in that race, and yep. got nabbed it when finishing second. $75,000 optional claimers going a mile in the 16th. The turn back is key, I believe, for this horse. We've been trying for years, not only this year, to try and translate with the form of $75,000 thousand option claim it means in Tampa or down here but I'm going to put a line through thinking that kind of thinking because it's Bill Mott and I just think he spotted this horse well up there turning him back I would not be surprised if this horse won right and she has a little tactical speed also right. and um, we've seen we've mentioned and seen a couple of Bill Mott horses from Payson Park it's a good place to to get a horse ready and they're doing very well yeah here. he's been on fire over the last yeah. few weeks the last couple of weeks of the championship meeting leading yeah. into our spring summer me. With that said, we'll take a break here at race number three because the Rainbow Six today starts in race number four. And when we come back, I'll show you my ticket and uh, hope you're getting yours ready. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Gulfstream today. It's Ron and Abby, and we're going to take a look at the fourth race. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is Philly and Mares. A four-year, or three-year-olds and up, excuse me. $12,500. We do have a scratch in here of number seven. Romantic forever. And as I mentioned, with a nine-race card, this is where the Rainbow Six starts. So we'll quickly show you my ticket in here. And uh, there you see, I'm going too deep in here with the one and the five in here. And then you see three, four, two, two, and three. $57.60. Couldn't find a single. I tried, but I just couldn't do it. A horse that I actually like in, in the fifth race. It was going to be my single, but it's a first-time starter, and it's a little bit of a guess in there. So uh, how did you see this one? What did you start it with? Um, yeah, I, I liked, uh, shoo, where am I here? The number five, Dabria. The, yes, Dabria, um, the start before last was easily good enough to, to win this race. So she's going to take off the blinkers, a little bit unusual, you know, move at least of late that we've seen here. Um, and she's got to avoid cooking with number six. Yep. Um, and I'm thinking maybe that's why they took the, you know, the blinkers off. Try to let her settle a little bit. Right. Maybe not make her as um, ready to run early. I thought it was a failed experiment. You know, she, uh, they removed the blinkers after that one start because she went up, chased the pace, and she faded in that race to get double, beat yeah. double digit lengths. And they were trying something. It looks like they said, well, let's yeah. go back to the drawing board. She, uh, you look at a race two starts back yeah. without the blinkers. Certainly points her out against this level of competition. The number one horse we both have on our ticket pillowcase is dropping to this level, debuting on the turf for trainer Dane Kubitsky. And I want to show you a stat from trainer Dane Kubitsky with horses going from uh, dirt uh, to uh, turf. There you see it up there. Uh, Maiden claimers over the past five years, seven for 23. That's pretty nice. 30% yeah. in the money, 48% of the time. A $3.71 ROI over those five years. So Pillowcase, as I mentioned, uh, you know, looks like in a good spot today. Dropping to this level, debuting on the turf, stretching out around two turns. You saw the stats, what this guy does. I'm talking about Dane Kaminsky. This horse got bumped at the start, got parked four wide on the turn, and faded to last. But that was her $35,000 career debut right. on the dirt. I think this is a better spot for her. Right. She's now got the one race under, and she's bred to appreciate the surface switch as well. I think she'll be in a good stocking position from that inside post. Number three, Rara, we both ended it with. Dropping, yep. stretching out, hoping both adjustments spark a wake-up call today. I think this horse has got to show me more before I can put it anywhere near the top of my ticket. But a horse who can certainly be on the exact or a trifecta ticket. Yeah, and it, interesting. She's back with uh, Antonio Sano, who got her career started on the turf with much comfort, much tougher company in the maiden special weight sprinting. So she's also had a little bit of tough luck. Um, so, yes, looking to turn things around for her, but definitely back where she should be pretty effective. Well, let's go to race number five this afternoon. And this one is a six furlong maiden special weight event for Phillies and Mares, three year olds and upward. And we do have some scratches in here of the number one Morea, the five Liberty Road and the number six horse in here, Bella Vicale. And uh, I went with the seven horse. This is the horse I was talking about that I wanted to sing, and I'll tell you why. It's a daughter of Malibu Moon, debuting for Michael Mariana, and I like the work this guy does. You don't see a lot of, he hasn't been around for a while. He had a slew of bullet workouts showing up at Classic Mile yeah. Park, plus a blistering half mile workout right here in 46 flat. Stop, sophomore starts a career, she gets Lasix, Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. Lots to like about this horse. Yeah, I, I mean, she just, she impressed me with the workout, not only the times of the workouts, but the pattern, that regular workout. And Classic Mile, you know, you, there's a lot of good horses training up there, so it's not like she's up there with just a few horses that are so-so. I mean, there's some nice horses come out of there. Yeah, you're not getting some phony bullets right. where there been, might have been, you right. know, uh, something not really up there. But the number two always on my mind is a horse, you know, is a daughter of congrats debuting for trainer Todd Pletcher. String of solid Palm Beach Downs workout showing, which includes back-to-back half-mile drills out of the gate. The three-year-old gets Lasix, Edgar Zayas at the controls. It's hard to leave Todd Fletcher out is why I couldn't single, uh, you know, the seven and Absolutely. the Rainbow Six. And I like that angle where he worked this horse a couple of times out of the gate. So this horse looks like it's going to be well prepped for this performance. Right, because that is a huge part of that first race. It's kind of why, you know, it's so... <laughs> That prep work is so important, and the gait, you know, that you want them relaxed, uh, yet they've got to be able to come out of there. So, yes, absolutely um, some nice 
uh, prepping there, and he's had plenty of experience. <laughs> well, number eight, Miss Holly, who you have at second. This yep. course is a, a very interesting in here. This yeah. one now in the Giuseppe Sidernia Barn. It's a daughter, another daughter of Malibu Moon in here, debuts locally. She was really interesting. She finishes third, going a mile and an eighth in a career debut yeah. at the very tough Saratoga meet in yes. July, and then finishes third against Maiden Special Weight Company up at Parks in September. So it looks like she's got some class in here. She's got some ability, I should say, and yeah. she's working well at Gulfstream Park West. So right, it, she is. It, this is that's what I thought too. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> um, you know that they even started her out going long at Saratoga says something. One thing it said to me is that she didn't have speed, but the other thing is that she had ability to finish third, first yeah. time out at the spa. That's, you, you better be tied on up there. So she definitely, um, you know, and some nice work. So yeah. maybe she's got a little bit of speed, you know, with the freshening up, but it was, that was what made me wonder about her was that first time long and not showing speed. Yeah, and you know, it, obviously she's had some problems because she only had that one race in July and then and she then came one. back in September. Yeah. So coming back, but the, this is where this barn excels. You come back and you know, you're not sure how the horse is gonna run and they do exceptionally well. So yeah. uh, that's how we see race number five, the sixth race today, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf, maiden special weight, Phillies and mares, three year olds and upward in here and you have the number six grand folly on top of your ticket so let's go back and show you uh, grand folly's performance debut performance at gulfstream park west back on november 28th and you'll see her there she just comes a running late and she looks uh, pretty good and of course it's christoph clement so this horse you know back then just coming on this is a first ever race i like the fact that she splits horses and comes running late and just uh, does a good job today and stretching out to a mile in the 16th right um yeah christophe clement this is their thing and not always known for winning first time out so she didn't but from a great barn really promising uh debut went to the sidelines for a little bit but that's not a big deal with them they if the horse needs some time needs to grow up she was a two-year-old it's okay. I'm top turf trainer, and she's been working well as well. Well, let's show you, Stan, exactly what this barn is going to do with this horse today. So this one, Christophe Clement, over the last five years, he's 25 for 112. Does it an awful lot, 22% with a six, uh, what is it, 62% uh, yeah. in the money, dollar thirty ROI. So that it, it's not a big investment, but they do it a lot of time. 31 to 60 day layoff, maiden special weight turf runners in the past five years. So you're right about that you know he gives him a raise he'll put him on the sidelines for a little bit yeah expecting this horse to run very well in there today you got it on top but i did go with the nine in here on top tis jewel cutting back to a mile in the 16th after stalking the pace and finishing third in pair in front of a pair of next out winners so i like that it's a key yeah. nine furlong maiden special weight race on february 10th so come out of a good race and guess who the trainer is Christoph. Christoph. So we got uh, the uh, old adage of the longer price of the uncoupled entry. We'll see who that is. We'll see who wins it there. I went with Tis Jewel, but of course you can't leave the number six grand folly off your ticket. The other horse you used on your ticket was the number five in here, and that's a Melody Gift. Yeah, um, Melody Girls, a firster from a good family. Uh, the barn has other options for a first-time starter, so I'm respecting the fact that they want to run her long in here on the grass. Yeah, the other horse I used was a Seven Now Power, and by the way, that was Melody Girl. I said Melody Gift, but it was Melody Girl. M uh, now Power, cutting back to a mile in the 16th, after a solid performance at a mile and an eighth in which he tracked the pace in second, drifted a bit at the eighth pole, finished third in the first ever outing on the turf. I think she's got a lot of upside today. Trained by Brian Lynch and ridden by Hall of Famer Edgar Prado. So this horse turning back, I thought it was a pretty decent performance for the first ever start on the turf. Yeah. So I threw that on the ticket. I don't know what price she is on the board. It's actually second choice on the board mm -hmm. over there. So I think we have the logical four in here, especially if you're paying playing a superfecta. With that said, we flip the page and we go to race number seven. And this one is seven furlongs, claimers, three and up, non-winners of two races in life, $12,500 a scratch in here of number five. Mike Corinthian has been declared out of the race. And I thought it was awful hard not to have the number nine <laughs> dancing in the heat on top of your ticket. Yeah, uh, you know, nice closing runs in the last couple of races, and this type of competition he fits really well with. Um, 
now in a new barn after the claim last time out. And yeah, this ho horse was hard to go past. I tried to look around <laughs> and thought, you know, oh, it's a favorite, let's find somebody else. Well, but that barn is Mike Trombetta via the claim, as you mentioned, following that narrow defeat against 12-5, two lifetime claimers going a mile. Comes back, finishes second as the favorite against 12-5. Condition claim is going seven furlongs. That was on a sealed sloppy track. Shows me this horse has ability to run yeah. on whatever uh, they put it, her on. So right. uh, him on, excuse me, thought it would run well. The other horse that we both have, well, we have the same try yep. here. Brother Bobo is cutting back to seven-eighths of a mile today after breaking from an outside post, which was number 10. Going up, vying for the lead and drifting late to finish third behind aforementioned Dancing in Heat. That was going a mile, but it was back on March 16th, so this one has been freshening up a little bit and maybe can turn the tables on number nine, uh, Dancing in the Heat. Yeah, and he went pretty quickly in that race, and, and he, he showed improved speed on the stretch back out. Now he's going to come back in distance just a little bit to try to to try to hang on and and. Yeah, I, I didn't see him beating that horse yet, but it's possible. It's possible. Certainly. And Starship Apache dropping to this level. That, you know, the horse was okay, won a $25,000 maiden test at three quarters of a mile. Then he comes black, runs a bit of a clunker against 30,000 two lifetime claimers. It looks like they're stretching for the right level for this horse. And at 12.5, it might be it. Right, he's got tactical speed. He's going to stretch out as well. And he could be sitting uh, just off the pace of probably the five horse. Um, Oh, oh, he scratched. Yeah, so, yeah. so this horse might, might you know, be able to set a little nice pace for himself. Yeah, that might help. That's a very yeah. important part of the scratch there. Let's go to race number eight today. Five furlongs on the turf. Starter optional claim of Phillies three-year-olds, fifty thousand dollars. And we want to go back. And I want to go back. And. Abby wants to go back, and we want to show you this <laughs> we performance. We all want to go back and show you the performance of Ella last time out, who moved to the Ralph Nix Bon Vita claim and now steps up to competition. But watch this horse's race on the turf last time out. She's been firing bullets since then. It looks like she really took to the turf yeah. and drew off here. So I just wanted to show that. I mean, it's uh, just cruising away here. And as I mentioned, she still continues to work well in the morning, so this didn't take her out of her too much. And there was no competition around her when she crossed under the wire. Right. No, absolutely. She she was claimed out of her last two races, right, right. each, you know, stepping up. She won handily in last race. Um, uh, they'll probably have to catch her in here. She steps up again for a sharp connection. No, that's like a it, nice claim. Yeah, look, that's the way it looks to me. You're absolutely right. I think it's a really sharp claim. Number seven, Miracle Girl, is cutting back to this five furlong distance. Gone up and set a pressured pace and finished the third when facing this same level of competition going a mile last time out. Kathy Ritvo ready to for the turn back. This is a key to me with a bullet half mile drill yes. in 46 and two. Looks like they're trying to put some speed into her. I don't think she can run early with the four horse in here, but I think that she might sit off the pace and hope someone challenges the four Elia for, uh, yes. early. Yes, yep, um, she's gonna shorten up a little bit here and a sharp work uh, for this return. She might prefer a longer distance, but you know, it looks like they're they're gonna give her a shot in here and exactly what you said, hope somebody else can go <laughs> up there and, and soften up the front end. Well, number three, my, um, Miss World Venezuela yep. is stepping up to face winners after a, a pretty eventful career debut at the distance, which she broke from the rail. She went up and dueled for the lead in that race. She bumped it to 316 pole, bore out out late and guess what she still won yeah. this barn <laughs> watch this barn they've been doing really good work the bruno tesori mcl had a meal going for two in a row and i just thought this horse had a big shot this afternoon i've really respected what this barn has been doing so i uh, threw it on my ticket yeah. and I couldn't leave it off the rainbow six ticket even though i wanted to with the uh you know with, at the way that elia ran last time out Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, she stalked a really, really fast pace. So, right. um, you know, she's uh, she looks really nice and a couple nice half mile works, kind of just maintenance, not uh, looking to drill anything more into her, just keep her where she's at. And uh, but you know, it's always that thing stepping up to face winners right. for the first time. You don't know what's really going to happen. It's not the greatest of uh, betting angles, right. but uh, certain of Bond has been going so well in this particular spot. So let's go to. The final race on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. These are claimed as Phillies and Mayors, four-year-olds, and up twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Scratch the main track only participant number eleven, Venom Girl. Uh, we, uh, we both went with yes. number three, Ladies Lunar Luck, who's uh, stretching out to one of her most accomplished distances. She's had five races at this distance, five wins, two seconds, two thirds. After posting her second consecutive victory at a mile, when she defeated sixteen thousand-dollar claimers last out. 
She's the logical choice. Yes. Tough to win three races in a row, but I think she's up to the task today. So, yeah, that's the thing with her. She's a warrior queen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've had some warrior guys lately. This, this mare, you know, 12, 6, and 7 from 48 starts. She has won her last two. Um, she's, you know, this horse, it wouldn't be the first time that she put three back to back. Right which that's why it, that didn't really scare me. Well, that's good angle there that, that you point out because some horses are, do that, they get in good form and they stay right. in good form for a while. Horse I used in second was Storm Sense, a winner of 50% of her turf races. She's had six races on the turf and won three of those. Dropping to this level after opening that quick three length lead before packing in and finishing ninth against Tougher. That was a 16 optional claimer at this level. I think she spotted perfectly in the nightcap today. Might have got a little too keen last time out. I know you used the number five horse yeah. in your second spot yeah i liked um pinsy's prinsy's prize <laughs> <laughs> Pinsy's and i prize. will not say that five times <laughs> fast um but she was you know last out she was right behind the choice the top choice our top choice and she showed some improve early speed she was stalking the pace and there's a couple that could try to press uh lady ladies lunar luck in yeah. here so maybe well, setting up a little better for her and our final horse that we want to talk about today is Pollyanna, the number four, who won her only previous turf race against $16,000 three lifetime claimers on March 13th. He's going back to the grass after failing to earn a check, and that was a yeah. 16 optional claimer when that race was moved to a sealed sloppy track. I'm going to show you is that Ricky Griffin. Here's another guy that ships down from Canada every year, and he does a really good job. And uh, just to show you here, he's three for 15, 20%. 27% in the money, but look at the ROI. When he does it, they pay $10.84. That's dirt to turf and root races over the past five years. So uh, a, a pretty good angle with the number four, Pollyanna. I don't know if this one will pay that today, but uh, certainly I think on the board at what it's six, six to, to one. one yeah. Six to one. So, you know, and I really respect what he does. He's got Tyler Gaffleyone in the yeah. saddle. And I really respect Tyler Gaffleyone <laughs> in the saddle. He's done a great job. He was our last summer's meet leading rider. Yeah, an Eclipse Award winner. An Eclipse Award winner as an apprentice and then really moved right in with the top guys as a journeyman to do a great job all winter. Yeah, so, he, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, her first turf start was good and there's some speed for her to run at in here coming yeah. from off the pace. I think she has a big shot in the nightcap. Well, that's how we see this Sunday card once again. Let's uh, update you what's happening here today. We got a, a nice carry over the kickoff today in the rolling super high fives. Race number four starts the Rainbow Six with uh, just about 400,000. It's going to go right over 400,000 yes. once the betting <laughs> starts. And just a great day. Fast main track, firm turf course. If you're here at the track, come and say hello. If not, uh, Watch us out there in simulcast land, and uh, we'll be back here uh, throughout the day to give you some more information. But first, we're going to turn it over to our track announcer, Gabe Pruitt. He'll let you know everything you need to know to have that winning day at beautiful Gulfstream Park.